right, guys. Hey, what's up? Okay. I thought, actually, we have to do a uh, tomato tutorial about how to grow giant tomatoes. I'd like to do it right now because we're actually going to harvest a couple of my big tomatoes that I have up at the end of my driveway. I don't know if you saw some of my last videos where I showed them, uh, but we got a couple big tomatoes at the end of my driveway, and I said I would make a tutorial about how I grew them. So I'm going to do that now, and toward the end or later on in the video, we're going to go up there and we're going to harvest them. They're growing in 40-gallon pots, uh, and we're going to see if I can break my record for tomato grown in a pot. My record weight is 4.88 pounds for a pot grown tomato. So we're going to try to beat that today. We're going to harvest some. We're going to weigh them. As long as they're over four pounds, I'm happy. Uh, four pounds of big tomato. So how do you get them that big? Well, uh, before we start talking about uh, fertilizers and micronutrients and stuff, uh, basically uh, seeds are probably the most important. Uh, starting with the right variety. Uh, so this is Domingo variety. If you saw my last videos, the, the all the plants that I have this year are Domingo variety. Uh, they are competitive giant tomatoes. So you can you can grow monsters with Domingo. Another one that um, I grow is Big Zac. I have seeds for sale in my description if you want to pick up some seeds. I'll have seeds from these Domingos later in the year. Uh, it's in the description if you want some. Otherwise, there's places you can find the seeds. A um, couple places to look would be worldclassgardening.com, uh, giantvegseeds.com. That's a UK, uh, they, UK uh, site, but they have some giant tomatoes. Some of them are expensive. So if you want some good seeds for a good, a cheaper price, I mean, you know, Hey, and if you're a subscriber, I'm going to send you free surprise, some kind of free surprise seed. So just let me know, uh, send a message if you make a purchase from me and let me know that you're a subscriber and I'll send you free gift seed. Okay, so basically start with a, uh, a tomato seed that can produce giant tomatoes. And by that I mean a lot of times they have to be able to create fused blossoms. We call them mega blooms. So they're these blossoms that are basically fused together so instead of just growing one round tomato, uh, it'll be a fused blossom that's kind of like multiple blossoms all in one. And so two tomatoes, four tomatoes could be kind of attached together. So they grow these really weird shapes. Um, this one here, this one here is a, I call it a slight double. So it kind of looks normal. Like this is not that big yet, but we're going to put a better cover on it. We're going to talk about covers, uh, but this, this is kind of, almost looks like a single, but I actually call this a slight double. Uh, so that was a mega bloom that, that started that. And we'll look at, uh, hopefully we can find a mega bloom up there so I can show you what that looks like. Uh, so basically first start with the seed that can grow a monster. So Big Zac, Domingo, uh, Delicious, Mega Marv. Uh, some of them are hard to find. Delicious had a world record at one time, but that's, that's a strain that you can find still at greenhouses sometimes so you might get lucky and find delicious strain and be able to get a mega bloom and grow it out a lot of times we just let one tomato grow per plant this plant has two tomatoes on it because i don't really think this is in my shady yard i've, I've shown in my videos i'm surrounded by trees this is all this is in shade almost most of the time uh, so i have two tomatoes on here because I, I didn't think they were going to be competitive so i'm kind of producing seeds with it uh, but this one's getting pretty big, so we'll have to take a closer look at that. But um, so once you uh, source the seeds, then your the first step is done. So you get yourself some good seeds, and when you're planting them, I choose some people. Some people uh, start a lot of stuff in little trays. Don't don't start seeds in them tiny little uh, seed trays. Them one by one inch, and then some people use um, little peat pots like this. Don't use that either. Um, they, they don't get as big, um, too much moisture is lost through the sides of the peat. And, and some people talk these up because you can just directly plant this into the ground because the roots will come right out of it. But there's a downfall, animals love the smell of peat. So like the animals in my area, if they smell peat in the ground, they wonder what it is and they dig it up. So I've, I never put a peat pot in the ground when I'm planting stuff. So what I use is like a four inch little plastic cheapo pots like this and just fill it about 
half full with your potting soil, well you can see, and uh, plant your seeds shallow in there and gently cover them and keep it moist. Tomato seeds are super easy to sprout. Uh, and then the reason I only fill it half full is because tomato seeds uh, plants will stretch up you know, rather quickly depending on the type of light you use. Um, or if you're just using a windowsill or starting them outdoors, they, they stretch. And then you just can, uh, fill in the pot as it stretches up. So you'll eventually fill this up. And tomatoes are awesome because they can create roots everywhere, like they, on all the branches. We can look at some later. Uh, they can create aerial roots even that just are just everywhere. So, so if you have um, a long stalk and you keep covering it with soil, there's, the root system is going to keep growing out. So when you go to plant your seedling in the ground, you can plant it as deep as possible. Just leave a little bit sticking out of the ground and just put most of the stem of the tomato in the ground because all of that's going to shoot out roots. And the bigger your root system, the bigger your tomato is going to be. Oh, I got to breathe. Um, okay, so yeah, so basically, basically that's that with this. So, uh, oh, and starting time. Uh, some people would think if you're trying to grow a giant tomato, you'd want to start super early. You don't have to. Actually, my biggest ever tomato that I grew was uh, 5.75 pounds, and I started the seed June 1st, and that was in here in Wisconsin. So you can start really late, because I was trying to match it up with an October way off for the competition. If you don't care about the competitions, if you're not trying to take it to a competition, then you can start whenever you want. But for some reason, June 1st was a good date to start for October wayoffs. And for some, I don't know why, it could have been the light spectrum of the changing angle of the sun, the cooler temperature while the fruit is growing. Something happened that, that was my biggest tomatoes. So these ones at the end of the driveway are a little bit, I started a, a couple weeks sooner than that, I think. Ugh. I'd have to look, I, I don't know, but. Uh, so starting time is up to you. If you're trying to match it up with a way off, that's fine. If you're not, then who cares? You could start them as early as you want because who knows what's the best option, you know. I don't know. You know, I keep trying different stuff, but some, sometimes stuff works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, let's talk about, I don't want to take too long. Like if you guys aren't here for a tomato tutorial video, then skip this video. I'm going to be doing tons of other weird, fun stuff, projects and stuff. So. This is specifically for tomato growers or giant tomato growers if you want to grow a giant one. Uh, let's talk about foods. Here's my favorite foods ever. Neptune's Harvest, uh, Neptune's Harvest seaweed is the best thing that's ever been existed. And I love uh, Alaskan fish fertilizer, 511. So these numbers on your fertilizer, like 511, is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So it shows you there's 5% nitrogen, uh, you know, 1% phosphorus, and 1% potassium. Uh, but there's also micronutrients and bacteria and, you know, good, all kinds of other good stuff in there. And this is a 001. So it's, it's very gentle on the plants, but there's all kinds of um, microbiology going on in here that's going to just amp up your soil. And this, these two will just supersize and make any plant flourish basically so if you take uh let's say a teaspoon of this and two teaspoons of this and add them to a one gallon sprayer i got my sprayer oh i didn't have it but yeah add it to a one gallon sprayer and foliar feed your plants your house plants your well this stuff kind of smells weird so maybe not your house plants but any plants outdoors foliar feed them i, I do it every day sometimes and the plants just grow nuts and people are like what do you do this is all i do uh there's other there's more but this if i could choose only two products as a gardener as i would choose these two so get these two and you'll be awesome uh there's other there's other cool stuff uh like this jackpot micronutrients let's see yeah micronutrients so this has all kinds of weird little stuff that that you want Good thing I didn't have the cap on. Uh, yeah, this stuff has like, um, this stuff has all kinds of stuff in it. It's even got, I don't have my uh, glasses on, but uh, boron and copper and iron and calcium, magnesium, mag manganese, zinc. And yeah, that's the good stuff. So a little bit of this can be foliar fed or soil drenched. 
That stuff's awesome. I give it to my giant pumpkin. Tomatoes get it. Uh, another thing that's kind of cool is humic acid. Most people probably haven't heard of that or use it, but humic acid is basically what organic matter breaks down into as its final stage. So if you have leaves or peat moss or something, if it completely breaks down, it has no nothing, it can only break down so much. It'll basically keep breaking down until it becomes this, humic acid. So this is more of a soil treatment. So this, this will feed all the little beneficial microbes and bacterias that are in your soil. It'll feed them and they'll get all excited and uh, breed and they will help your plant take up all this nutrients because they are gonna be feeding and breaking down other organic matter that's in the soil. And then that, by them breaking that matter down, it makes all these elements that they excrete available to your plant roots. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so we got some of that cool stuff. So, but the, these are all kind of more micro, like this isn't the main food source. This is just all kind of the, uh, yeah, the micro ingredients to a super healthy plant. So you can use um, simple, as your main food source for your tomatoes, you can use, uh, you know, simple over the counter stuff that you'll find at all your local shops and stuff, uh, like a miracle Grow tomato. This Schultz tomato is actually really nice. I just got this and realized how awesome it is because this is a, the uh, elements in here is a 17, 18, 28. So what te that tells me is this has a lot of uh, potassium in it and that is really good for fruit growth. So as a giant tomato grower, we want a lot of potassium toward the end of the season. So at, toward the middle and beginning of the season, I'll feed this. This has, a, you know, this has less, um, I wish I should have my other glasses on. This is like a 16, 18, 21. So that's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So this is more balanced. So this is good a little earlier on, but honestly, I would go with this Schultz if next year, this is empty. I, I used it all. I put a bunch of this on my giant pumpkin too. That, that's, a, that's good for the giant pumpkin. Just cause it says um, tomato food, that doesn't mean nothing. That just means it has a uh, high potassium for fruit growth. Cause people like fruit growth when they're dealing with their tomatoes. Ugh. So yeah, so just general feeding, you can just use simple stuff like that. There is more complicated ways to do it, but that's all you really need to do for a giant, that's fine. Uh, you could get really crazy with stuff like this. If you really want to add potassium, they sell 0050. Um, this is uh, potash. So this is 0050 pure uh, potassium, basically. So you have to just add a tiny bit of this. You can add, a, I don't know, maybe a teaspoon per gallon couple times a week or once a week toward the very end like when you really want to push the growth but this stuff's scary because some people will feed this to their giant pumpkins and they can split blow up even you know so you don't have to use this okay so that's kind of how I feed them so what I'll do is I'll, I'll feed I feed I water every single day because tomatoes don't like wet dry cycles tomatoes like to just be kind of evenly wet all the time some plants like a wet dry cycle. Some plants like to be dry. Some plants like to be wet. Uh, tomatoes just like to be moist all the time. So I, I, I water every single day. I give two and a half gallons of water every to each pot up at the end of the driveway there. This one's in a bigger rock garden here. So I just kind of do whatever. I can tell there's not a lot of food in this plant because the leaves aren't curling. Uh, you'll notice up there at the driveway, uh, you'll notice a lot of my leaves are curled up like this. And that's just from a lot of food content and that's fine, but I don't really know what's better. So I'm still learning too. Um, so, so yeah, I'll, I'll foliar feed. Some people say you don't want to get your tomato leaves wet. Um, but that is kind of just a little bit of an urban legend because of how easily tomatoes get blight and blight is usually caused from soil splashing up onto the leaves of the pumpkin or at the, the Flashing up onto the leaves of the tomato. My pumpkin's right over there. I was looking at it. Uh, if dirt splashes onto the leaves of your tomato, a lot of times there is some kind of blight, which is, I think, a, a fungal or bacterial um, disease. I, I kind of forget, but 
Uh, it'll start in the lower leaves. Like a lot of times, you can almost even see some blotching already here. So it's best to keep the, the tomato leaves cut up off the ground. So you'll notice there's no, I don't let any of the leaves touch the ground. I could even trim this up farther. Like it, you should almost have a gap like this, a gap like this so no leaves are near the soil. Because usually that blight starts from the soil and splashes up onto the leaves when it rains or when you water. But when I'm foliar feeding, I spray, I spray straight down on the plant and I don't get real deep into the plant. I don't let the tomato get stay wet for very long. So um, you want to foliar feed either in the morning or in the evening. I'd say the morning's better or early evening as long as the sun's not shining on it. So don't foliar feed any of your plants. Don't spray anything on the leaves of your plants if it's in the sun. That's just a general rule. So like right now would be a okay because look this is the, the the sun's going down it's probably like 3 30 4 o'clock okay it's not going down it's going behind my trees i have trees everywhere but um this would be okay it's barely getting any sun but i could fill your feed this right now and i will just spray straight down on it and get all these top leaves wet uh other plants i will literally soak them in the underside of the leaves but if tomatoes they don't really like the wet leaves i guess that's the theory. So I, I usually just spray straight down, get all the surfaces wet, and you can do it every single day. You could literally use these every single day on your plants, just in a diluted manner. Like I said, like a you know, teaspoon, two teaspoons, uh, half a teaspoon, or whatever. Yeah, a teaspoon of these that'd be fine. So and your plants will just go nuts. So now let's talk about well let's see what should we talk about let's take you guys off the tripod um so as you might have saw in the other little tomato update you have to support the tomatoes this one's got a really bad cover we're going to put a better cover on it let's take this one off because see we're going to pick we're going to pick one of the big tomatoes today two we're going to pick two big ones and weigh them we're going to try to break my all-time record uh so this is just a, let's see, how big is this? Let's get a, let's get a scale. Oh, wow. That's not so bad. But do you see how I have it tied here? So see, these tomatoes will get so heavy that they will break themselves off. So see, I actually just jab this big stick in the ground and I can, uh, I tied it, tied the stem to it. And some people will build hammocks under them so you can support it underneath. Um, it's almost easier if you have something to tie to a lot of times you can just tie tie the string to a branch but see there was no branch above this so I had to put that stick in and let's go on the other side I hope this isn't too much stupid information this is only for the people that are trying to grow a giant I guess or just really getting better at growing tomatoes I guess uh, this plant is actually pretty big. I, I'm trying to step back to get the whole thing. Ah, you can't really tell, but so you'll see I have uh, even these bamboo sticks stuck here, and you'll see I have that up on the road too because look, I have the string tied. Here's a little baby giant. Hey, that got bigger since yesterday. They grow pretty fast. So th here's a baby giant one that I'm gonna keep. That one might time out to for the way off with my uh, giant pumpkin. So you'll see I used to have a, another tomato tied. Here's a loop that this must have been around a different tomato that was here that I cut off. I cut off a couple other ones. Uh, so basically I let I let the plant grow, but I, I don't let it just go nuts into a huge bush. Even though this looks like a big bush, I usually try to only let a couple big branches grow. Sometimes I only let one big stalk grow and cut off all the other growth and only let one main trunk, like a tree, grow up. And every time it tries to branch out, I'll stop it. I'll, I'll, I'll nip it off. So it just grows straight up one stalk. And I've had one 12 and a half feet tall. So it can get pretty crazy. And that was Big Zach from my seed stock. Uh, but in this, this year, I'm letting them branch, but I'm only letting them branch uh, kind of big beefy branches Honestly, this one here, this is the plant that's up by my house. I kind of let it turn into a bush, um, but we'll see how it ends up. But I, 
Uh, at this point, we also are going to, once we know we have our fruit set, um, I, I, I'm going to start getting rid of all the new growth. So see, here's new growth. Boop. Let's get rid of that. Can you guys see any more growth here? I took some off in the last video, but um, we're going to go up to the road and we're going to take a look at, see if we can find a mega bloom and show you some more stuff up there. Here's some, here's some more growth. See, it's trying to sprout everywhere. At this point, we just want the energy to go into the tomato. Oh, here's a big sprout. Yeah, see, let's get rid of all that because we just want it to focus on all its energy putting into them to fruit. And if this was a competitive plant that I wanted to compete with, I would only have one tomato. But I'm going to use this as seed stock probably. And who knows? That other one's already so big that this one is so much smaller maybe i'll be all right and we'll get a couple big ones so uh we will continue this up at the road um and i'll try to show you some mega bloom blossoms and some other techniques all right i'm back oh i just took a look at that whole video i made and realized that lighting was changing constantly with my stupid phone camera i apologize oh it's so frustrating. There's no way I can do that 20 minute rant again. So I guess I got to turn off the auto exposure or something. I apologize. I'm still learning. Haven't been on YouTube for 10 years and now I'm now I'm back. So it's a it's a learning curve. So I'm going to get better. Everything's going to get better. So subscribe, check out all my videos because they're going to all get better. OK, I brought a little table up here with a scale. We have, this is where, let's set up the tripod here. Uh, this is, let me back up. So this is where I have um, my giant tomatoes, most of them, or, you know, the other ones. Uh, the reason I have them up here is because you can see, here's my driveway. If you saw in the other video, uh, I live in the woods. So at the end of the driveway here, so you can see, I have some nice open sky here. Got a produce stand there. Uh, yeah, so I have a nice open sky. I got about a half a day of sun. So the giant tomatoes do pretty good up here. Um, I picked I picked one tomato already. It was off of this plant. Uh, this was a really big tomato. Uh, it was my fourth biggest I've ever grown. It was uh, four pounds, 12 ounces. So these are the other plants. I have four plants left. Uh, two plants have big ones that we're going to harvest today and then two, two the other two didn't really have competitive size ones so i'm, I'm kind of doing seed stock ones um why don't we take a look quick here is a big tomato let's take the cover off so see i like to make these covers i'll show you this too uh, so what i do is i i take a to kind of make it blend in i, I took duct tape and uh, attach it to tinfoil so the tinfoil blocks all the UV from the tomato so the UV from the Sun and if you can block that UV light from the tomato the tomato will stay green longer and get bigger so um, it's it's uh, it's definitely a must you have to cover them so we're gonna take this cover and put it on that uh, fruit down back at the house over there so we got a really big tomato here that we're going to weigh today. Let's get a little, let's get a little scale with my hand. Uh, this one's 24 inches around, I think. Oh, I should have brought the tape measure. Uh, maybe we'll, maybe I'll go grab that. Uh, it's a big one. So we have it tied up here and it's got a big stem that we're going to have to cut. So this plant is in a 40 gallon. Um, it's got a, it's only got probably... It, at some point it's split into two big main branches and yep it just split and then I, I guess I let it split a little bit more into a couple branches to get some foliage so it did I guess in this year it is kind of grown in kind of like a bush I guess uh, and I, I see some things I should have stayed up on now that I took that cover off normally uh, I would have took I didn't see these so see I'd be snipping these off to make sure all the energy is going into that one tomato. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so that's that one. 
Uh, you'll see the bamboo again right here, this little tripod, because I didn't have anything to tie this tomato to. This is a little giant that might get, I don't know, who knows. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to get competitive, but it's pretty big. So I, you know, I want to, I want to give it a chance. So I had to, um, I had to tie it to the post or, or to the bamboo here to support it. So, okay. One second. Okay. Sorry about that. Somebody pulled in my driveway. So I had a, I had to cut it a little bit there. So yeah, yeah. You can do a little, whatever you can do to support the tomato. So see, this one is literally hanging um, it's hanging from the top of this. So usually you can find a spot to tie it to. Um, let's go around the sides of, let's go around the back of this here. I showed some of this in the other video, but, uh, this maybe nobody's watched that video. So here's a little, here's a little giant, uh, that I have tied up and don't be scared to use big thick string because it's less damaging on the, the stem of the tomato. So, Big rope is good. Uh, okay, here's a big old guy. Look at this. Look at this. What? This thing, oh my gosh. Wow. This thing's big. Look at this stem. Cool. So we were talking about the roots earlier. Look at the roots popping out. See the roots? These are all aerial roots. The tomatoes are basically a vine. They're not meant to actually be up in the air, really. They're kind of meant to sprawl along the ground like if they were in nature um, and they will just try to root wherever they can. So see, there's roots, there's roots popping out everywhere there. But look at that tomato. I don't think this one's going to weigh as much because it's got a big crack, like uh, like a big old gap in the bottom. We'll look at it when we pick it. So that one might be four pounds. Who knows? Um, there's some awesome round, giant round ones here. This thing might just be like a showstopper, like roundy. Look at this thing. What? Domingo oh, is an amazing variety. They usually, oh, this. so this is just a single blossom. Um, nice round one. And there's even a bigger one here. It's got a super growth, growth uh, stretch marks. Is that the word? So it's kind of ugly because it's got these giant stretch marks. But this is a huge... Cute. This is going to be the biggest round tomato I've ever grown. Or one of these two will. I guess we could we could pick this one too. Let's do that. Yeah. We're going to pick three. What good, this was going to be my biggest round tomato ever. And we're going to try to beat 4.88 pounds. And that'll be a new record. Okay, we got another tomato here. So see, these plants that I didn't think had a potential super giant, I let them grow multiples. So see, this, this plant here has three tomatoes on it. You know, it's got this one and the two roundies. This plant just has the one giant. And then, it, see, it's hard to tell because they're all kind of merged together. I guess it'd be better if these were farther apart from each other. Um, and then this tomato is, I guess it's the only one on this plant. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to have to trim it. So see, here is new growth. Get rid of that. We can leave the new leaves like this. Leaves are fine, but we don't want it to continue to grow new sprouts. Uh, here's a new sprout. Stuff like that. Oh, here's a big new sprout. I don't know. I don't know. I might leave some new sprouts grow on a couple of these plants just so I can maybe get some more seeds. But I don't think there's enough time left. It's the very end of August. Um, so, yeah, so basically all of these, all of these were allowed to grow multiple branches, but I try not to let them just become a huge bush. Here's some new growth that we can get rid of. Okay, let's step back and take a look. I'm trying to think. Honestly, that's all. Oh, the Mega Bloom. We got to find a Mega Bloom. Okay, I thought I saw one in here somewhere. Oh, see there, I, I've snipped most of everything off. Oh, here's one. This is what I'm talking about. Here. Okay, so see, here's a normal, here's a normal set of blossoms. But look, this one blossom right here looks different. This is a double. 
So see how you can even see that it has two bulges, like a little crack? So what I would do if I was setting this, this uh, cluster up to grow, I would get rid of all the other blossoms on it. So all the energy gets put into this one stem here. And this is a mega bloom right here. It's a double. But we're not going to actually grow that one. I'm going to leave it for now. But here's, here's a mega bloom that... Look at how wide the stem is here. This is a goofy one. And look, it already is done pollinating. I didn't, I didn't assist pollinate this. So right, we can actually take the blossoms off of here. I can tell it's, it's dry enough, or I mean, it's far enough along. We can take these petals off, and we can see how long the uh, tomato is. So see, if we look really close there, look, see how long that fruit is. That's like one, two, three. That's pretty much like four tomatoes attached. See how it's like a long, sometimes they'll call them a caterpillar. Um, that's pretty cool. We're going to let that one grow for sure. So that's a mega bloom. And I'll show you something really weird. Do you know what this electric toothbrush is for? I'll give you a second. Do you guys know? Not too many people know what I would have electric toothbrush here for. Let's grab it. Uh, now the blossoms are already done, but we use, or I use, electric toothbrush to help pollinate the blossoms. Because these mega blooms have a little bit trouble pollinating because they're so weird shaped. So all you have to do is vibrate them like this, boop, done, with an electric toothbrush. But that's already uh, been pollinated. But let, let's say if it was a newly opened flower, you just come by with an electric toothbrush and once a day just whoop, touch it for a second. And that simulates basically like a bumblebee buzz pollinating, I think it's called. Where a bee will land on a blossom, a tomato blossom like a bumblebee, and it'll buzz its body really, really fast by vibrations. And it'll drop the pollen out. And that's how these get pollinated. They self-pollinate themselves. But if you vibrate them, that happens a lot easier and you'll end up with a more pollinated fruit. So I know that sounds kind of crazy. Here's another uh, tip that we could take off. So yeah, buzz your, buzz your plants with a, a $2 electric toothbrush. Uh, you can buzz your flowers and you'll get better pollination. Especially if you have no bees showing up, uh, you can just do it all yourself. Just touch it for a, a quarter second. Okay, let's put that back. That's weird. Why is that there? People wonder why that's there probably. Okay. Finally, can we weigh these? If you guys have any questions, if there's something I missed, uh, that's fine. Like we can, we can, uh, we're going to be picking a couple more probably at some point. I can maybe uh, answer in the comments or something if somebody has a question. Uh, but let's pick, let's pick uh, this, let's pick this small, let's pick this round one first and we're going to set because a lot of a lot of this is people trying to grow their personal best. It's always fun to go to a way off and win first place, get a plaque, get a ribbon, beat everybody else, win some money. That's fun, you know. But a lot actually, when you're growing giant fruits and vegetables stuff like this, uh, it's best to compete with yourself. Like try to get the like best, you know. So like the first time you try a giant tomato, try for one pound two pounds, three pounds, and then try for four, and then try for five. If we get a five pounder today, you're gonna see me a little bit excited, I ain't gonna lie. It's been a lot of years since I've hit five pounds. Even four pounds is very exciting. So we have a couple big ones to weigh, and let's just see. These are these are done a little too early that I can't bring them to a weigh off. Um, they're not gonna last. I could try to store them. I've stored them for up to 30 days a month, but it's not easy, and I I don't think I would have picked them earlier. And then I would have stored them at about 55 degrees in a controlled environment in a fridge. Uh, okay, I'm going to put you guys on the tripod. I hope this video is not too long. I'm so sorry. I'm sure I'll edit out some of it. Okay, let's put you guys on the tripod. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's just get the tripod ready. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go grab that. 
I'm gonna go grab that round one. Yeah, we'll just let, we'll just keep this rolling. I'm gonna go grab that round one and let's see how much it weighs. Wow, this is cool. Look, can you guys see? Okay, wow, yeah, this is a single. This is just a, you know, this is a complete just single. But see, it's got all these weird lines that are kind of ugly, but that's from just growth, massive growth. And look at these roots. Let me get behind the camera so I can see what I'm looking at. Look at the roots. There's roots sticking out. Wow, that's cool. What do you think? Two and a half? I'm going to say this is over two pounds. Okay, let's aim down. Let's do this. Okay, real time. This is going to be my new personal best round single. For sure. Is it two pounds? Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Oh, three. Actually, you know what? This is three pounds, two ounce, but I like to put it in the mode. Um, there, I like this mode. So it's 3.15 pounds. Oh my God. Wow, that's amazing. I can't believe that. That's just a single. Oh man. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, how much is these other ones gonna weigh? Wow, I got you guys tilted kind of weird. Should we try to cent try to tilt this better? There we go. As long as we can see that. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Okay, let's set that one over here. All right, I'm gonna grab. Okay, I'm gonna go grab uh, that that next big one here. I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second. Okay, I figured I might as well record uh, cutting this next one off because this is this one might be pretty big um, let's just see if we can chop it here oh god I'm, I don't want to cut into the tomato wow this is hard I guess I should have brought a big old clipper or something right e, 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 e. don't hit my finger Wow, this is hard. The struggle is real. There. Oh, oh, I almost dropped it. Catch it. I caught it. You guys saw that live. There it is. First time off the plant. Let's feel it. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Oh, there we go. What do you think? Wow. Oh, God, I don't want to look at that. Oh, nice. I was scared this was rotten. So this is normal. It looks weird, kind of gross. This is just where the two, see there's two huge tomatoes that were fused from the whole start, like the mega bloom. And it grew these two big bulges. And then this is where it split. But look, it's all dry, healthy. Uh, I was scared that this was rotten. I couldn't tell because it was under that hammock. This is all dry, perfectly fine for a way off. Uh, so this is, this fruit's in actual perfect condition. Let's go to the scale. I don't think this one's that big. I don't even know if this one, I don't think we're gonna, I don't even know if we're gonna get four pounds. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong though. Okay, here, let's get a, let me get a shot of me holding it quick. Wow, it actually is kind of heavy. Oh, I guess I'm so excited. Okay. Is this a good shot? Can you see me? Okay. Um, yeah, we'll have to measure this too, but I should have brought my tape measure before we even weighed them, but that's okay. I think this will be four pounds, but just barely maybe. We, we want to try to be, oh God, I the camera. Oh, please don't be screwed up. Hello, guys, are you okay? Are you okay, guys? Is everyone okay? Uh, okay, everybody's fine. Don't worry. I'm not cutting none of that out. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, what a disaster. 
Okay, can you, let's get this on. Okay, let's go for, I just want four pounds because I'm gonna have a category for my seed sales that are four pound plus seeds. So I really need another four pound fruit. So uh, let's go for it here. You guys can kind of see, there's a car driving by. He's gonna be like, what is this guy doing? Okay, here we go. Please be four pounds or 4.89. That'll be my new record. Oh, yes, yes, 5.15. Yes, 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 yes. I can't believe it. Um, I grew a 5.16. A 5.16 was my second biggest tomato I ever grew. Um, so this is my third biggest tomato I've ever grown. And it is now the new biggest tomato I've ever grown in a pot. Yes, I'm so happy. Are you kidding me? How much is this other one going to weigh? Are you kidding me? I'm so happy, guys. I'm so happy you guys get to see this. I hope this is cool. 5.15. So if we were to um, change it to ounces, uh, you know, a uh, unit. Uh, so that would be the equivalent of 5.24 ounces. But I like to, I think the weigh offs and stuff, they always go by the percentage. So let's we'll do it one more time. Oh my God, I can't believe it. 5.15. Whew. Uh-oh, now we got to pick the big one. Maybe it's smaller. Maybe it's smaller. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, let's go get the big one. Sorry about the sound. Let's not knock the camera over. Okay, let's grab this big boy. This is so exciting. I'm so happy to be back on YouTube because usually I just pick this and celebrate alone or with my family, but now you guys get to see it. Okay, let's pick it. That does not even look like, I think this one's bigger. Okay, let's cut the string. This one's gonna be hard to pick because the, oh my goodness. The stem is right in the way. Oh gosh, how am I gonna do this? Um, the stem is right on the fruit. Eh. There we go. There. Oh, I don't know. Oh, there we go. What do you think? Can we see it? Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, it's heavy. Can we see it on the camera? Oh, it's pretty heavy. Okay, let's see what the bottom looks like. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's perfect condition. At a way off, this would be perfect. There's a little bit of a, uh, oh yeah, there's a little bit of almost like rot or mildew started there, but this is not going to a way off anyway. I don't know, man. Let's bring it back to the scale here. Why am I out of breath cutting a tomato? Okay, let's get you guys angled down. Sorry about that sound again. I'm still trying to become better. Okay, let's get a shot of this. Okay, is this bigger than the other one? It feels kind of light. Wait, this one feels heavy. Whoa. This one actually feels, this one feels heavier. Yeah, this one feels kind of light. Weird. Oh yeah, this is gonna be lighter. Okay, let's see. I thought this was the big one. Can we hit five pounds again? Or 4.89, can we get two personal records for pot growing? Let's find out. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. Ready? This one feels kind of light, it's weird. Oh, yes! Just barely. 
just barely 5.1. Well, that means I can have a five pound category uh, seed sale. Oh my gosh, that was so close. Oh, and actually at the at a way off, they will cut this within one inch, but that would still put us within the uh, five pound range. Um, wow, awesome. Okay, um, let's see what that would have been with the ounces. Oh, it's just barely. Look at that. 5.17 ounces. Oh, I'm so happy. I got another five pounder. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So right here, we got 10 pounds. Here, let me hold them both now. There we go. Is this good? There's 10 pounds, over 10 pounds here. Oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Three more reps. Just kidding, okay. Oh, I'm so happy guys. Thank you for coming along on the ride. Let's do a handheld here. Okay, so actually basically now, these plants can be caterpillar food for our caterpillar we're raising. You'd have to watch the other videos. Um, I could let them go a little bit to see if we can get another blossom started, but it's, it's, I think it's going to be too late. So I can take out this plant. Actually, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out the unneeded plants because that's going to give more, um, more air and sun and whatever, whatnot to the plants that are still growing. I just picked two five pounders. I'm so happy. Okay, uh, what we'll do, I'll do it on my own time, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this cover. We got another cover back there. Um, I'm gonna put that on the other one where we uh, did the start of the tutorial. I'm gonna put that, you know, I'll cover some more fruit with these because these covers are what do the trick. You just clip them on, so. I just use a little clip like this, and as long as they're shaded like that, you're good to go. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, we'll also do a uh, seed collection video. I'll let these turn bright red until they almost start to rot. I'll, I'll photograph them, get really good photos. And um, once they start getting real mushy and soft, uh, we will uh, get the seeds out of them, and I'll show you how we process the seeds. It's very easy and awesome. That'll be a separate video. Hey, thanks guys, appreciate it. Sorry for the long video, but if you were here for tomatoes, uh, that's what we did. So we're gonna be doing some other awesome stuff. So subscribe, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So please help me out. And we'll catch up with you guys on the next video, probably tomorrow. See you guys.